Hello, welcome to Nobody's Watching episode 12. This is my uh, best loadout video for pinball. Pinball's a bit different from playing 3v3. Um, you're going to get a lot of kills and you're going to die a lot. Deaths don't matter, kills don't matter, it's all about tokens. Um, so because of this, you're going to want at least two out of the three blasters to have very, very short respawn times. This is my current loadout and I have one main blaster and that's the speed. The speed's got a really long respawn time but everything else it does, it does fantastically. It's got really high damage, really high um, rate of fire and most importantly fast movement speed. When you play pinball fast movement speed's the name of the game and as you can see our movement speed increases over time. Because we've got small HP we use the shield. When we die, we're going to rely on our next two blasters. So I've recently done a video on the two. This is really, really good in pinball. Um, it's got, again, a very fast movement speed and it's got a short, uh, short um, respawn time. Those are the two main factors you want. Apart from that, you want a high damage output. You don't want to worry too much about HP because you're going to die a lot. It's just going to happen. Get used to it. Survivability only really matters when you're holding tokens. Um, and speed helps with this because you can just run away from your opponent. I also use the 3, which is one of the best blasters for pinball in my opinion. Um, it heals twice as quick, it's got a really long range. Its rate of fire is not very high, but everything else is great. Good movement speed, short reload time, and I give it the dyno uh, power just to make it move even quicker. So that's my current loadout got one blaster that's exceptional the other two are just quick respawns with fast movement speed decent damage i am going to use the revonics to overtake the speed once i've leveled it up and to be honest i might even give that a go later today i've not got the revonics quite to where i want it to get it to yet but i have just leveled it up to level eight today which is really nice you you also want anything that can get you quick kills um, so the zombie blasters that have got the chainsaw ability aren't actually that bad as you can see the movement speed's okay That first nerf power gives it the ability to damage people up front I see these blasters in pinball quite a lot I see the hyper fire a lot um, This again, it's got really high movement speed It's got good accuracy, it's got a really nice clip um, short auto shoot range but that doesn't matter because normally you're going to be charging forward and trying to take tokens anyway you do tend to fight at range if you're holding all the tokens and trying to hide at your base but you can just double tap the screen to fire regardless of your auto shoot range another blaster i tend to run into is um this ultra select blaster now personally having had a look at the stats I don't think I'd be using this because of the super slow movement speed. If I did use it, I'd probably want to use it with the dyno power to increase its speed. Um, but everything else it does, it does really well. It pumps out a lot of damage fast. Okay, so let's take our load out, jump into some games and just have a look at how it works. Compared to the other modes of play, team play is actually really important in here. So if you've got teammates that are working with you and paying attention to what you're doing, you're paying attention to what they're doing, that can be really great. If you've got teammates that are completely rogue and they're not paying attention to the flow of the game, it can be extremely difficult to win, even if you've got ideal blasters. Okay, we'll start as usual. Run straight to the middle, try and get these um, two tokens. Um, one of the things I found with this blaster is that main environmental hazard in the middle, the circle. Um, if you speed up too much, you can run into it by accident. But the other thing that can happen is if you're standing near it and somebody's got high knockback, they can just knock you straight into that hole and then you're instantly dead regardless of how much life you've got regardless of if you've got your shield up so it's just something to be aware of it does happen doesn't matter too much unless it's like late game shield coming in clutch there uh, allowing us to take out our opponent where and then there we go we're in the water it's one of my least favorite things about the speed on this level is the amount of times you end up in the water straight away get taken out again doesn't matter though like i said earlier 
you're gonna die a lot really doesn't matter um the deaths don't count the kills don't count what counts are the tokens so we win that attrition war i picked up the tokens and now we're retreating because if somebody does take us out which is likely to happen we want it to be as close to our base as possible once again the two with its really high rate of fire and really fast reload time is doing us very well i'm really glad i added in that uh, heal car because it's just give us the longevity that this blaster normally lacks and because it's got a really high um, rate of um, speed rather than just trying to hang out and hide somewhere and hope that we can bite people off we can just run around and we can use that mini map in the top left corner to just see where our opponents are try and avoid them and just run away from them in a circle do this all the time once you've got the tokens running away is nine times out of ten the best strategy you've got every pinball arena is full of environmental hazards and items so it's very very hard for people to snipe you it's hard to get a line of sight to the other side of the field especially on a high speed moving target right in my haste i forgot to talk about blasters that are good early game um, so the Shockwave was one of my first all-stars in pinball. I use this early on because it's got a really high rate of damage. It's got a massive HP at 20,000. Healing rate's really high. The movement speed's really high. The auto-shoot range is good and it's got a decent-sized clip. I used this for a long time before I got other blasters unlocked. It's very, very effective even though it's not got that high rate of fire that I look for. Um, and if you're just starting out, I would recommend trying out the Shockwave in Pinball if you've got it leveled up. Another good early blaster is the Echo. It's good everywhere. Really what you're looking for again, high movement speed, high rate of fire. I can't emphasise that enough. The Pinball Arena is also a really nice place to try out blasters you've not used before to try and get a feel for them. Kills and deaths don't matter as long as you can do something useful. Okay, straight in with our vulnerable speed. Going for those tokens immediately and we've got that shield if we need it. So pick up one, pick up two, back up. Splash straight into the water. Happens all the time, very annoying. Now this giant guy here is using the boondozer. If we don't take him out, it's just going to decimate our entire team. You'll see this prismatic blaster a lot because it's got a ludicrous level of damage. Mine's base level 2 and it's uh, got a damage of over 3000 which is completely insane. I can't emphasise how insane that is. The thing is, at level 2 it's got higher damage than my level 10 uh, speed, higher than my level 11 2, higher than the 3. In fact, have I got anything that matches it? That's the question. What about, okay, the Megadon? No, even that, two and a half. So it turns out that um, the only blaster that I currently have is uh, that's higher is this Pharaoh for, at 4,000 damage. Uh, and that is a level 10 sniper rifle. So we either take this person out or we're just going to get wiped out. So thankfully the entire team kind of recognises that threat, we concentrate fire, we take them out. Enables us to pick up at least one of the tokens and the fight continues. Having teammates work with you towards an objective makes a huge difference in this game mode. If all three of you are just running around doing your own thing, your chances of winning are pretty slim. Um, it can still happen, you know, if you can run in and kill someone with all the tokens and take them and run away, it can happen. Um, but it is much, much, much harder. Whereas when you've got teammates who are paying attention to what's going on, defending you when you've got the tokens or they're running back and letting you defend them when they've got the tokens, you've got a far, far better chance of winning. So pay attention to what your teammates are doing. Pay attention to where both your teammates and your opponents are on the map. Pay attention to which of your teammates have um, tokens. And if you've got a teammate who's got a lot of tokens, um, try and stay near them so that if they drop all the tokens you can pick them up so at this point we just need two more tokens for the win um healing card coming in clutch there getting us back full so i'm just hanging around near the back of my base um on this particular level i love this little ramp up here 
Um, if you've seen any, any of my pinball videos, you'll see me doing that. So there's the other two. Jump down, grab them, and now all we need to do is evade. So we've got the enemies kind of over there. So I'm using the structure between us, trying to see which way they'll run. They split, which is smart of them. Um, thankfully, we managed to take out that lone person who didn't have much health. And we get the victory. If I'd have ran the other way, chances are we wouldn't. Or not as in immediately anyway. Um, sometimes these games can go backwards and forwards for quite a while with 10 tokens just being passed side to side to side to side. So the key moment for me in the last match was when we focused and took out the guy with the, um, the bulldozer. Um, the boomdozer, not the bulldozer, sorry. The bulldozer would be a bit unfair in a nerf war. You've probably noticed that I keep doing that with my speech. Um, that's just due, due to dyslexia uh, and also the fact that I can't be bothered doing 25 takes just to get the word right. Ooh, right, so here we've got 11, 11 Rivonics. This is a problem. If we don't manage to take this blaster down, I honestly can't see us winning this match. Um, and you can see in my haste and focus, I just get hit by the pinball. So you'll see here what I mean about dying all the time, and this is why you need that um, those two blasters with a fast respawn time. Otherwise, you can just be sat around, not able to do anything. And that Ravonix is just tearing us up every time we get that person close to death. They heal back up, and they're using the healing card with it as well, which just makes it even harder. Um, so the focus here uh, is gone completely away from tokens and shifts entirely to trying to kill them. You see the enemy have collected 7 out of the 10 tokens. Um, irrelevant, we're not going to be able to hold them even if we get them with this Rivonix running around. So thankfully that shield just gives me enough breathing room to um, to manage to take out the Rivonix. Now the Rivonix has got I think a 55 second spawn time. So now we've got a very tight window to win this game before that Rivonix is back up and running. So we need to get, pick up as many of those tokens as we can and evade. I've got five and that enemy's got the other four, drops them, I pick them up. Right, so now all we need to do is stay alive. Now you notice I've only got nine of the ten, so I run over to what's my usual hidey spot. No point hiding when I've got such movement speed, so I just hightail it all the way across to the other side of the map um, because nobody's going to catch me when you when you've got a couple of ticks of speed on the speed blaster. And there we go, we get the win before that level 11 Rivonix comes back in and tears us up. That is snatching victory from the jaws of defeat, if you ask me. So while I was busy recording the first half of that video, um, my daily quests reset. I went and had a look at them and I saw I had two for the Rivonix 360. I said earlier I was thinking of doing um, a quick look at the Rivonix, even though it's not level 10 yet. That was all the incentive I need, so... In we go, let's get this equipped. Let's give that the um, shield, because again, we've not got high enough HP for that survivability yet. I fully intend on making this my main blaster for pinball, and well, actually, for absolutely every game type once I've got it to level 10, because once we unlock that um, healing ability, it's just gonna be nuts. I mean, you saw in the last match how that level 11 Rivonix was just nigh impossible to kill. That's what we're hoping for. Incidentally, I'm gonna make a short video showing you how to level up a Rivonix quickly as a free-to-play player, um, but I'm imagining that will have probably dropped before this video drops because that's gonna be very quick to put together and this is taking ages. Okay, solid start. We've got the tokens and we're backing up as per usual. Um, because we're using the three blaster, we've got nice range and this level lends itself really nicely to fighting at range. Slightly under the cosh, but there's only um, three tokens on the map at this point, well four now, so it's not a massive deal yet. Um, still we survived that encounter and we managed to take out the guy with the motor blitz, which is nice. Um, I don't have the motor blitz unlocked, but I would love to do a video on it. I've got the blaster in real life and it's it's just beautiful to play with. Okay, so really nice teamwork here. Um, we're working well together. We're holding all the um, tokens, or we were. Uh, we've still got most of them. 
everybody's kind of moving together so when i fall back they're not advancing too far likewise when they push forward i try and push forward a bit when you notice your teammates behaving like this you should pay extra attention to what they're doing and you'll have a far better chance of success okay we still have a comfortable lead and now our teammate has managed to take another couple of tokens two holding out on the opponent's side so there's all 10 on the field i've got uh, eight of them so now i'm just in runaway mode essentially when you're in this position if you can easily pick up the remaining tokens so you've got 10 regardless of how many you your teammates have got that's usually worth doing didn't need to in this case our teammates held out and by evading well we managed to take a very very quick victory Stats there showing that we healed almost twice as much as damage that we did. Uh, that's unusual. I, I sort of won too fast though, so we didn't actually use the Rivonic, so now I'm coming in with it, especially as we've got quest to complete. So I wouldn't usually start with this blaster, but let's get stuck in. It could be hard to see, but if you're watching um, the darts, discs, whatever flying, you, you can see them actually ricocheting to two opponent opposing teammates if they're all stood close together it's quite fun to watch and as we know once that hits level 10 each of those hits will heal us for five percent okay the Ravonix is on cooldown so we're just going to go and support our um, two teammates who are fighting on the opposing side not always the best idea especially when we've got all the tokens that's where they are. I'm not holding any. I might as well back them up. That way, if they drop the tokens, hopefully I can collect them. As you can see, though, the result is that uh, opponents now hold six tokens and we hold none. Fight on your own side of the field. Oh, we've got seven now. So we managed to take them back and our um, teammate is wisely retreating back to our side. So we're going to have the home field advantage. Um, I'm going to do my best to try and support them, although we've got a big guy running around with a boomdozer, so that person needs to die before we can even think about winning this game. Opponents now winning, they're holding eight of the tokens, um, but boom, there he goes, and he drops all the tokens. We've got them all. This is looking quite good. With them being split across all three people, there's a high chance that one of them is going to get taken out and it will reset that timer. You always have a better chance of victory when one person's got them all. So, there you see my teammate drops them, I immediately pick them up and I've got the Dragon Power active, so now I'm just going on a run. I've got nine, so we can if I can find a tenth, I can single-handedly win the game. And luckily for us, there's one right there. So now all I need to do is survive. Try to keep objects between yourself and your opponents so that you can attempt to avoid damage essentially. So simply there, I just run away. That's more than enough for us to win the game. This video has gone really long, so I'm going to do one more video showing the Rivonix uh, and then I'll call it a day, I think. I'm running into all three, so I'm going to need that five and a half second shield. And you can see there we're getting the multiple damage with the uh, darts just ricocheting from one person to the other. You can see the damage racking up's really nice. And the shields enabled us to avoid taking loads and loads of damage. It feels like you can do so much before you need to reload it. it like that 30 dart clip really feels like a lot, even though the rate of fire is super high. And that fast reload time's insane. I've got no idea if this game ever nerfs the weapons once they've been released. Um, but if they do, I wouldn't be surprised if this does get a nerf. Nerfing your nerf blasters. Hmm. I bet they probably wouldn't actually, because this game seems fairly dead. And if they did that, that would probably be valid grounds for people to claim refund if they spent money. So on that basis, they're probably not going to. So even at level 8, we were an absolute menace there and it took a long time before we died. Come back in and we immediately just pick all the tokens straight back up because we fought on our side. I've got all the tokens and low health, so I'm going to run off to my hidey hole and try and heal. 
Now I just said the game is fairly dead and I've also previously said that there's not really any content out there for this game. Turns out both of those things aren't quite as true as I thought. Um, since I've been making these videos, I've started getting recommended videos by small content creators like myself. Um, it's really nice to see other people making content for this game. It shows that there is an interest. Um, and, you know, with a bit of luck, I may even get to work with some of these content creators in the future. So keep an eye out for that. I will give a, a shout out to any. I might link some of their profiles in the description. I think it's good to support content creators on a small game like this where you know it's mostly filled with bots because we want to encourage the game to stay alive and we want to encourage the devs to keep investing time into the game. Unfortunately even though we've got five tokens our opponent have got all ten. At this point it can be very very hard to get them back especially when they're wisely holding up on their side of the field. So run over give it everything we've got um, but unfortunately we lose you can't win them all. Still, I feel like he gave the Ravonics a really good show in this last match, and I can't wait to get it to level 10. Thank you for watching this episode of Nobody's Watching. Keep an eye out for my solo loadout vid, which will probably drop next week.